It is week one of the college football season and we are doing a little deep dive into what's going on over on the Alabama front because I got my boy Matt Zenitz here, our SEC insider for the week. Matt Zenitz, what is up? What's up? Number one question going into this Alabama football game against Louisville is who will be the starting quarterback? I think that's probably been the number one question in spring fall camp. Has anything anything been indicative to you that a starter will be named before that game kicks off on Saturday? I think that there is probably a very slim chance that that happens. So the depth chart came out today, and the depth chart had the nice little slash on there, where it has or yeah. uh, the, the two guys. And I think that will continue to be the case leading up to the first game. So my personal expectation, I, I think that it's probably more likely than not that you see a combination of those two guys against Louisville and that the competition essentially carries over through at least that game. But hey, Alabama's in a good position because they, they have two guys who are, are very, very talented and both from everything I've heard have had good fall camps or had good fall camps aside from uh, Jalen in the, the first scrimmage. But overall, it seems like both guys were just collectively good and they're, they're in a position where have two good guys and I, I think they will use that game as a means to help them make that, that final determination and take away that slash. Take, gotta, gotta remove that eventually. slash and, eventually and it may not even be after week one. There's still a lot of question marks, a lot that can still go into this quarterback competition. Tua, the more accurate of the two quarterbacks seemingly and then you have Jalen, a more versatile quarterback. So that kind of answered, that goes to the next question I want to ask you is what is it going to take? So if you if you separate the two guys, the pros and cons, you go down the list, what will it take for either quarterback to win the competition? We'll start with Tua. What does Tua need to do to win that quarterback competition? So something with Tua that I think is clear to anyone that knows anything about Tua at this point. Tua has some gunslinger-like characteristics. Mm -hmm. There's some good with that. There can be some bad with that, with that also. And Coach Saban, if you look at his track record, has typically gone with guys that he trusts to not make the big mistake. And Tua will make a lot of big plays and have a lot of wow-type throws. But at the same time, at least behind the scenes during the course of the last year, will also take some chances that maybe you wouldn't necessarily see from Jalen. And I, I think it's probably safe to say, especially leading up to fall camp, that there was more trust in Jalen to avoid making the big mistake than there was with Tua, which is something that obviously would work in, in Jalen's favor to go along with just the, the versatility that you talked about and the, the dual threat ability and, and that talent, that ability to make plays as a runner to go along with throwing the football. And for Jalen, I, I think it's pretty obvious as to, to show uh, more of a capability to consistently make plays with his arm to go along with that running ability. Well, there you have it. Matt Zenitz with the inside information on the quarterback race. We will see. I think the speculation is all over the place. Everybody has been speculating this thing. I think everybody is back ready the for this game. Even to before happen. the spring. So. I know, of course. Yeah, I mean, th this goes back to the last season, though, that people were starting to talk about this. And I, th I think we would have been in the same position even if Tua didn't get in there in the national championship game. That Tua is talented enough that there would have been a competition anyway, and we would have been in the same spot that there we're in right now. Maybe not with all of the national attention be right. being paid to it as, as there is right now, but I think we would have been in the same position. I will say this about the quarterback also. So I, I said about both guys having good fall camps aside from that first scrimmage for Jalen. So the, the second scrimmage I heard Jalen was particularly good and made some, some plays as a, a throwing the football and, and Tua did the same thing. So Tua started off a little bit slow in that second scrimmage but in the end had something like three touchdowns, no interceptions, and I think collectively for the two scrimmages had something like six or seven touchdowns and no interceptions, which, it, which obviously is very good. But the, the last thing that, that Alabama saw in something close to a game like setting was that second yeah. scrimmage where both guys did do very well. Yeah, so I think there will be a lot that will unfold. We'll see a lot when we actually get into live action and kind of break that, th break that thing down. And of course, uh, as you said, when you go into situations like this, I think that, you know, Nick Saban is not, this is not new territory, these quarterback competitions. This has been dating back to 2011 with A.J. McCarron and every single year. But it all plays out, right? It mm -hmm. seems to all work itself out. So football season is here, my friends. We're excited about it. Thank you so much for watching and for all your Alabama Crimson Tide updates and for everything around the SEC, you can visit us on AL.com. This video was brought to you by Caliber, a luxury store in Homewood, Alabama that's reviving the finer things in hunting and fishing.